This technical presentation is brought to you by the Asphalt Emulsion Manufacturers Association, or EMA, and is titled, Choosing the Right Asphalt Emulsion for the Job. Asphalt emulsions are used throughout the life cycle of all asphalt pavements. Everything from new construction to maintenance to reconstruction. This slide lists only a few examples of the different treatments and processes that utilize asphalt emulsion, but serves to show the extreme versatility of these products. However, choosing the right emulsion for the right treatment at the right time is critical to ensure cost effectiveness and lasting performance. This process does not have to be a confusing black box approach if certain considerations are made. It truly is picking the right tool for the job. There are three basic steps to selecting the right asphalt emulsion for any job or process. The first is to define the characteristics or performance measures that are desirable in the fresh and cured treatment. Take for example chip seals or seal coats as they're called in some areas. Chip seals consist of a thin layer of asphalt emulsion sprayed onto an existing pavement surface then covered by a uniform layer of aggregate chips. Since we need to ensure that the emulsion does not run off the pavement before chips can be embedded, and a thick film holding the chips in place is required, a high viscosity emulsion is selected. We also want a rapid set or cure to lock the aggregate chips in and expedite the maintenance process. Other factors that should be considered are whether there are specific project restrictions, such as night work, quick return to traffic, high traffic volumes, and others. Finally, when will the project be constructed? In the middle of summer, when it's hot and dry, or during spring or fall, when it's cool and damp? All of these factors need to be considered when choosing the right emulsion for the job. Many asphalt emulsion treatments utilize aggregate as a component, and the properties of the aggregate are also vitally important. Revisiting the chip seal example. Some chip sealing emulsions, such as CRS2, that's cationic, rapid set, high viscosity, do not perform well with dusty aggregate. So in this case, changing either the emulsion or the aggregate properties would be required if dusty aggregate are encountered. Other properties to look for are the type of aggregate, which can affect bonding characteristics, gradation or particle size distribution, which can affect reactivity, and angularity or particle shape, which can affect how aggregates consolidate with respect to each other. The graphic at right demonstrates how aggregate size is used to calculate the proper application rate of emulsion in the chip seal process. Finally, it's important not to ignore regional experience with a specific emulsion system. This isn't to recommend adopting an attitude of doing what has always been done, but rather understanding why a certain emulsion system works for a given process in a given region and then replicating it. But keep in mind, there's usually more than one solution for a given combination of project factors, so keep an open mind. Let's put theory to practice and walk through three examples of emulsion selection spanning new construction through rehabilitation. When a new asphalt pavement is constructed, Individual layers or lifts are bonded together with asphalt emulsion to ensure that the layers act as a single, uniform, flexible layer. This is called a bond coat or a tap coat. The characteristics we want out of a bond coat are uniform coverage at relatively low application rates, curing to a non-tacky or non-sticky film. Since aggregates aren't a factor here, a good choice might be a stable, low viscosity product made with a harder or stiffer base asphalt to resist tracking, something like CSS 1H, that's cationic, slow set, low viscosity, hard penetration. The other advantage to a stable system like CSS 1H can be, is that it can be diluted with water to help achieve more uniform coverage, as shown in the graphic on the left. Another example that we have discussed is chip seals. Here we have a project description that indicates we'll be dealing with relatively high volumes of traffic with limited closure time. Usually, that means adding a polymer in the emulsion system. The aggregate is listed as a clean granite. What we want out of the emulsion would be a high viscosity to remain on grade and a product that produces a thick film to lock in the aggregate but something that would cure quickly to resist the high traffic loads. A good choice here might be CRS2P, that's cationic, rapid set, 
high viscosity with polymer. Now say for example the chips we used were a more dusty limestone instead of the granite and washing was not an option. In that instance, we'd still want the polymer to resist the high traffic, but choosing a high float type emulsion might make more sense to deal with the dust, something such as an HFRS2P, that's high float, rapid set, high viscosity with polymer. Finally, we have an example of a pavement that has reached the end of its service life. The plan is to pulverize the existing layer along with about 25% of the underlying base and stabilize with asphalt emulsion. We know the blended material will contain a significant portion of fine material, meaning we need a mixing grade emulsion that remains workable enough to be injected and compacted before setting. A good choice here might be CSS1, that's cationic, slow set, low viscosity. This product is stable enough to mix with graded aggregate and has a low enough viscosity to coat everything thoroughly. This is also an application where an engineered emulsion, that is an emulsion that's specifically designed for a process, might be a good candidate since the compacted layer will need to cure with limited air and UV exposure. Although by no means exhaustive, what these examples serve to illustrate is a process by which the right tool can be selected for the job by first analyzing project requirements and expectations and then matching those expectations with emulsion properties. If you are interested in more information, be sure to watch the other educational videos in this series. For technical resources or to learn how to join EMA, please visit ema.org or call 630-942-6579.